Right, hello year 11. So I thought I'd do a little video update about HS2. HS2 is a huge project and connecting north and south of the UK. Uh, it's a big part of your changing economic world uh, case study of the UK for paper two. Um, and a lot has changed since the specification was written in 2016. First thing for you to keep in mind is um, I'm going to go through what it is, what's pros, what the cons, what happened and what's the future going to look like. Okay, so first thing, what is HS2? Well, actually, HS2 is a high speed um Two, which is a high-speed railway between connecting London to the north of England. Uh, it is idea is for it to mirror high-speed one, which it already exists, and it goes from London to Pancras to the Channel Tunnel. At which point, it goes into the tunnel and comes back out into France to connect Brussels and uh, Paris with the Eurostar lines. Okay, so uh, we just basically want to stretch that for even further, and the idea is to shrink the time it takes for you, for people and businesses and workers to commute between London and Birmingham, and London and Manchester, and then Birmingham and Leeds. That was original project. Okay, the reason for it is because there's a historic underinvestment in transport in the UK. Um, things are changing. Two of the biggest transport infrastructure projects in the world are currently being built in some ways uh, in the UK. Crossrail has now been finished. The Elizabeth Line in London and um, and HS2 is still under construction with a few caveats, which I'll explain in a second. Okay, you can see behind uh, my face over here, uh, you've got a different journey times. Aim it is it shrinks. That journey time between major cities the big one being london and manchester uh, 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 overall okay so uh why build hs2 well the first reason why uh companies want to build hs2 or companies i should say uh, the uk wants to build hs2 is because since the victorian age era where the london underground and the railway network was actually established there's been very limited investment in infrastructure in the uk and that differs massively to other countries nearby i'm french in france we love a massive uh a mega project we've we've built we helped to build the channel tunnel over to the uk we have an extensive digiv network which goes crisscrosses france at unbelievably speed unbelievable speeds um we built bridges like the viaduc de mio and like we've built tunnels like the tunnel du Vrichus and the tunnel du mont blanc connecting us to italy over uh, under the alps if that makes sense okay we love it um it works a treat uh, it can take me so my parents live in brussels it takes me uh, about three and a half hours to get from brussels to lyon uh, which is my where my family's from um, and that's via paris it's unbelievably speedy uh, at that speed in england you would barely make it to taunton from london okay um so aim is for uh again i'll move my face here but the aim is for us to be able to reduce journey time between north and south is to improve the uk's economy expected in improvements about 40 billion pounds um a boost to our gdp um help businesses in the midlands and north northern england uh, create jobs in the midlands and northern england and make transport more sustainable make move away from fossil fuels and the cars into more uh, electrified lines uh, which are more environmentally friendly okay creating jobs and helping businesses is also a great way to kickstart the famous multiply effect However, um, it's very expensive. Um, it's, it's, the bill was standing around 80 billion pounds with it could even increase about 100 billion pounds. Uh, UK airlines, arguably, because people would take the speed, the high speed train would lose out. Um, there'd be some visual pollution. There'd be some noise pollution uh, for the people who live around uh, the HS2 line. Some um, houses have had to uh, be bought, uh, been bought. So people lost uh, the value in the house and a fixed asset. Massive damage to the environment, unacceptable cost to quote uh, some news reports, putting homes of wildlife, including barn owls and otters at risk, had to uh, had to plow through some some woodlands. Um, and um, but the biggest problem is the cost is due to the fact HS2 is trying to satisfy so many different stakeholders. OK, and actually it's become, it's become so unreasonable as a cost that uh, the government has actually and yesterday evening announced that it was going to scrap. Um, the second phase of HS2. So this is how HS2 currently looks like, not much of what it used to be. So we're still going from London to Manchester. Phase one is currently under construction and expected to be delivered and finished. But they've scrapped the leg to uh, Leeds in 2021. They have now officially decided to scrap the leg to the East Midland Parkway, which no one really seems to talk about, and Manchester, which is the second phase. And that is massive because it, what it basically means is that we now have a high speed rail connecting London to Birmingham. But Birmingham isn't necessarily very much in the north of England to some extent. Um, and actually, it's made Londoners life easier because Londoners can get out of London very easily. But it's not improved or changed the life of the northerners whatsoever. So if anything, instead of shrinking that gap, it's accentuated it. Obviously, the government's take, tried to spin this and has tried to show that they are not going to waste that money. They still do care about leveling, leveling up. And uh, what David Cameron used to call the um, Northern Powerhouse, 
Um, Boris Johnson's government and Rishi Sunak call it leveling up. And so they've created something called uh, Network North. And Network North is basically, this is a map I've taken from Rishi Sunak's um, X um, or Twitter page. You can see the uh, part of HS2. The aim is to include, I'll quote him directly from his um from his Twitter feed, the aim is to um, include, uh, in place, we'll reinvest every penny in hundreds of new projects in the north of Midlands and across the country. That's £36 billion pounds investment. We'll build, we'll build hundreds of projects uh, people want, starting sooner and finishing faster. £12 billion pounds from Manchester to uh, Liverpool uh, Railway. Full electrified line to Sheffield, Bradford and Hull. Full Midland Rail Hub. Key ro ro road upgrades. Modern mass transit system. By that, he means tr uh, tram. Um, and bus service and local rail. You can see them all here. There's loads of them. Whether you go for Wales, whether you go up in the uh, into the Lake District, onto the northeast. Um, the concept of the north is stretched to unbelievable limits because you'll notice they've even upgrading this Travis Stock to Plymouth uh, line, along with a few around um, around Devon. So uh, there's also Felixstowe over there. There's obviously the HS2. So the argument goes that actually what they're doing instead of having one line going from London to Manchester, they're going to they're going to improve the transport in lots of different parts of uh, of the north, which in itself is a great way to connect the north better between it, each other. Okay. There are downsides to it. The biggest downside is the fact that, uh, well, actually, the money is not just going to be good to the north. You can see it down there. Quite a few south southern cities are going to benefit. So the north north will lose out on some of the investment. The other criticism is the fact that we have a um, lots of bits and bobs are being done, but none of them are connected. So actually, it's not connecting anyone to any anyone. It's connecting. Uh, you can go from A to B. B uh, you can go from C to D and you can go from E to F, but you can't go from B to C and you can't go from D to E, if that makes sense. It's connecting and you can go sort of everywhere but nowhere at the same time because nothing is interconnected, which doesn't necessarily shrink that gap very well. Um, as someone who teaches in Bristol, we are down here, uh, there's literally nothing going in this uh, axis. Everything seems to be going from like north, the southeast to the northwest. Nothing's going from the southeast, uh, southwest to the northeast. Um, I've, got, I've got family who lives in, in, uh, in York. It's a palaver to get to uh, as you zigzag through the UK from west to east going northwards, OK? Um, I was also in Union Sheffield, for instance. It, I used to take my Eurostar from Brussels, um, Brussels and Midi to St Pancras. took me two hours and five minutes. And actually, when I in St Pancras, I changed trains to go to Sheffield. That journey took me longer than it did to go to Brussels from London. And that's via France, OK? So the railway networks in the UK are highly congested very slow, still using diesel. They're arguably, not going to lie, archaic compared to other parts of Europe like France, Spain and Italy. Um, so losing HSU is a huge blow to northern co the concept of shrinking the north-south divide. Uh, if anything, uh, the only people benefiting from the current HS2 plan are the southerners. Uh, so massive questions to, uh, to answer. Also sort of highlights the fact